All right, so we're going to take a look at Ben's new series. Well, it's not so new. It's about two months old called Facts. This is episode one. If anything from the Daily Wire should hold up against a modicum of research, it should be this, right? It's self-entitled Facts. So let's see how it does. There's a group of people who control what you are allowed to see. The news you read, the videos you watch, the posts you engage with. You haven't heard of them. You don't know their names. But they determine through methods both direct and indirect whether you are allowed to be exposed to particular messages. Their decision... Before we get to what he's going to be talking about, this is pretty good intro, right? Like, good music, makes it seem almost conspiracy theory-esque, but it's got that like underpinning of a TV show. I got to hand it to him. Daily Wire really does do production value really well. Intros, outros, that sort of stuff. Very clean looking show, right? Even like that walk up. Here we go. ...can bankrupt companies, silence voices, and fundamentally shift cultural norms. Who are these people and how do they do this? Well, at the top level, you have a network of global elites that has created a universal framework full of guidelines and ratings designed to enforce approved narratives and punish disapproved ones. It sounds like a conspiracy theory, except it isn't a secret and we're not guessing. Another really standout point. Great little intro to do the title, a nice title screen. I, I really should just sort of like steal this sort of stuff for my channel if I could even make it work. <laughs> Anyways, really good stuff. Uh, I like it so far. So far I've seen WF, the World Economic Forum, WFA, don't know what that is, uh, Garm and NewsGuard, passing familiarity. First, you have the World Economic Forum, WEF, and their platform for shaping the future of media, entertainment, and culture. Second, you have the World Federation of Advertisers, WFA, who represent mega corporations that control 90% of global advertising dollars. WFA members are a who's who of global business and include some of our recent wokeified favorites, like Bud Light's parent company, AB InBev. But does it only include wokeified favorites? Let's see who's in this, if it'll even say. These are individual people. Bank of America, that can't be wokeified, right? Okay, so Bank of America for a 2020 cycle, very close, but slightly more on the Democratic side. Can we go back in years? 2.1, almost $2.2 million. Lots in lobbying, that's definitely a problem, right? Pretty close at the top levels. Democrat in North Carolina, Republican in Georgia. I mean, it looks pretty split. Oh, here's a good one, right? So here we go. Average contributions to members of Congress. Republicans, Democrats, you can see it goes through from about 2006 until today. More to the Republican Party than the Democratic Party. You have in Senate a weird reversal, sort of, for this middle area right here. But for the most part, Republicans is pretty standard. Then it just kind of bounces and stays on top or tied. Okay. Um, I wonder if we can we look at a couple more. I wish this was like organized by top people, right? Biggest groups. Let's just look at Walt Disney, right? I'm actually kind of curious. Recently, they've been pretty blue, but in the past, yeah, see, so lots more money, pretty blue. I wonder if that holds up over time. Oh, look at that. See? So. Democrats recently more, Republicans less, so kind of the opposite, and Democrats more with tying in 2024. Okay, what about Best Buy? That was also in the list. 
not as substantial in lobbying or contributions. Pretty red, red and blue, kind of mixed. Anyways, this is open secrets. Um, following the money in politics. I'll leave this open, but it does see just from a handful, not even a handful of people, just a couple of people, the WFA looks like it's a mixed bag of what would be considered conservative and liberal political contributions. I wonder what Bud Light actually looks like. Just curious now. Wow, kind of throwing them under the bus, aren't they? Look at this. So, lots of red. Huge amounts. This is like Walt Disney reversed. Um, up until 2002, 2004, not so even, then boom, boom, boom. No wonder those ads hurt them so much because they're, you know, very Republican oriented. A little bit of blue on top, but since about 2010, red's been higher. Here's a very consistent trend. Here, the blue, like if you were to draw a line, it'd be kind of down well below, where it's like red's going through pretty high. And then at the end is over. So definitely more red than blue. Again, it looks like big giant corporations are more than happy to bet on both sides of the political spectrum. My guess is that they're looking for people who are sympathetic to their cause versus an actual like company that has an agenda, right? They're just looking to make profit. Anyways, let's see what Ben has to say about it. So I'm going to put open secrets in there. You can investigate all of the different groups you want. Hershey, Procter & Gamble, Lego. Actually, I want to do this. Procter & Gamble. Okay, pretty blue, although small. Not quite as many lobbying contributions. See, like, this is the thing. Their contributions are only 574000 Right? They don't really care who's involved. Just enough, right? But their lobbying is huge. Everyone's lobbying and this is huge. It's a lot of money, right? To just throw into Congress to make your you make whatever you know specific law you want win. Oh, look at this. He's calling them out as wokeified, but house, these are small contribution amounts to be fair, but Definitely very red till very 2024. This is just all over the map, it looks like, with red kind of winning out at the end. But yeah. And then what was one of the other ones he just mentioned? Lego. Oh, this is gonna be scary. I don't wanna I don't wanna think Lego is. Please be very blue. Oh, they're not even involved. Like, look at this. Look at this. They're just, oh, thank goodness. Is Lego Systems Lego? I'm hoping so. It's got to be this, right? Can you see what they, oh, interesting. Bill's lobbied. This is a, a great thing. Like, we could see, we could check on, like, what people actually did. Anyways, they're more blue for sure, but they're barely involved in politics. So it's it's almost a who cares from them, and he calls them out. I'm hoping Lego Systems is Lego. <laughs> okay, who else does he call Disney? Yeah, okay, anyways, there's some people in there. Mixed bag, for sure. Definitely not what you would anticipate. Anheuser-Busch is definitely more blue than red, especially more recently. Just this last cycle, not so much. Oh, and Disney. There is barely a billionaire Fortune 500 CEO, heavyweight philanthropist, government, or woke nonprofit that isn't associated with the WEF or the WFA. In 2019, the WFA established the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, or GARM. Within months, the WEF adopted GARM as part of its platform for shaping the future of media, entertainment, and culture. GARM is a cross- Wait, who is that? Who is that from? What was that article from? Mercatornet. So mixed factually, 
definitely a right leaning. Of course, that's why the Daily Wire is supporting them or using them as a news source. So let's see. Of course, it's, it's even quoting Michael Knowles, who's part of the Daily Wire. So they're using the Daily Wire as a news source, Newswire, Daily Wire is using them as a news source. That's the kind of loop that always makes someone question what's happening because people are just like shaking hands at that point, right? Garm has created standards that limit or entirely demonetize platforms that contain hate speech on gender identity and insensitive treatment of debated social issues. That's what this is kind of calling out. Open up those standards. Yeah, and they call it Lego, but if the other thing's to be believed, it's not a big issue. And Procter & Gamble we looked at wasn't an issue. Disney, until recently, not a big issue. Um, I wonder what Walmart says with Open Secrets, but I, I can't imagine it'd be super blue, right? Was Garm actually a thought police? This seems very... Um, rich with uh, biased language instead of reporting on or educating things. Anyways, um, what was the safety standards? Okay, so this is a PDF direct from them, but it does look like it's from the WFA. Okay, so that's right. Goals for the solution. Okay, so okay, they want to create consistent and understandable language. They create standards. To basically ward off misinformation through monetization options. Okay. If this is just demonetization, then that's, I think it's going to be a problem for Ben because if he's going to say that demonetization effectively quiets dissenters, then he would have to argue that we need to pay people as private companies for their free speech regardless of what they said so for instance like you would you should have to buy someone's book if they're a holocaust denier and i don't think he's going to make that argument because i mean it'd be weird because isn't i think he's on the side of freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences Now, in recent years, of course, since it's been switched around where like people get demonetized or they get um, boycotted or whatnot, essentially the cancel culture, right? That these multimillionaires getting canceled is also ridiculous. But uh, I can have freedom of speech, just bring it down to my level, right? I can speak freely on whatever I want. That's protected by the government, but I can't be in my job and say whatever I want because I may be creating a bad experience with my customer. And if I do that, I can be fired. Now, I shouldn't go to jail for that, right? But I can still say it taking on that risk. I hope that's what he's sort of focuses on. Oh, here we go. Here's the content. Okay. So this is the brand safety floor. So not content, not appropriate for any advertising support. So how's this solution going to be used? Platforms will adopt operationalize and continue to enforce monetization policies with a clear mapping to GARM brand suitability framework. If four agents will leverage the framework to guide how they invest. Okay. So this looks like they're creating a standard for separating out the advertiser from messaging. They don't want like their, you know, cleaning supplies to be associated with, I don't know, Nazis, right? Or people who are saying like murder um, homosexuals or something like that, right? Like they don't want their ad to pop up when those kinds of commentary are happening in the show because it can look to the viewer like one supports the other. And psychologically, if we don't like the message, we'll probably also not like the things advertised to us. Same thing in reverse. Like if you like the message of the show, you'll probably like the advertisers more. Okay, so that's basic psychology. But um, 
don't explicit sexual content. Okay. Yeah. Child pornography. That's bad. Um, gratuitous depiction of sexual acts. They probably don't want that on a, you know, train set advertisement, right? Arms and ammunition. Okay. Crime and harmful acts. The death of military, online piracy. Of course, they don't want any of that sort of stuff. Hate speech and acts of aggression. So behavior content that incites hatred, promotes violence, vilifies or dehumanizes groups or individuals based on race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, age, ability, nationality, religion, caste, victims and survivors of violent acts and their kin, immigration status, or serious disease sufferers. So this seems like some of these would go like in reverse, right? Like, you know, if um, you're far on the left and you really don't like the nature of a caste system, you might denigrate some folks in that group. You can't do that, right? Um, or you might yell at certain religions um, and make fun of them or bully them or that sort of thing. You can't do that and get advertisement um, or serious disease efforts. The whole COVID-19, right? Getting COVID because you didn't take your vaccine or whatever. We shouldn't be um, vilifying those folks or promoting violence against them in any way, shape, or form. In the reverse, though, what I, where I think his argument's going to be is race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Daily Wire does a lot to say bad things or blame, um, basically, folks in the transgender community, folks who are of a non-white race, uh, in particular blacks. Um, they're really focused on those sorts of things. I mean, I, I think it's Ben who said in one of his interviews that we need to stop looking at um, what's the system doing that's systematically racist against black people and instead look at black communities and see what's wrong with them, essentially. That would be vilifying a particular group of people. He could, I mean, that potential question may not fall under this specific hate speech or acts of aggression, but if he kept promoting violence or hatred towards groups because of that, instead of just asking the question or doing research or educating, I can see how that could be a problem um, for sure, right? For advertisers. Um, and this is all about from advertisers, right? Oh, they even have a chart. Okay, so, oh, and it looks like if you look at low risk for content categories, educational, informative, and scientific treatment of whatever it might be, seems fine. Okay. It's when we get into here, so depiction or portrayal of hateful, denigrating, or inciting content focused on race, right? So like literal hate speech. There's some breakdowns with examples for medium or moderate. And they said somewhere up above that there was a process for um, getting an exception. Okay. I can see how easily the Daily Wire, well, at least some of the people in the Daily Wire, Michael Knowles, Matt Walsh, could be perhaps demonetized from these sorts of things, especially Matt Walsh. But let's see what he says. What's, what's his problem with these groups? Because if he's pro-capitalism, right, this is a bunch of corporations getting together to talk about their own products and their own advertisement and disallowing or allowing basically them to pay somebody to have certain message, which is, it's worse that they do it for lobbying, right? All the money in politics, what's considered free speech for corporations by the Supreme Court versus anything else. But let, let's see. Media, entertainment, and culture. GARM is a cross-industry alliance that brings these mega corporations, the advertisers, together with big tech companies like Meta, who owns Facebook and Instagram, Google-owned YouTube, the CCP's TikTok, and even Snapchat and Pinterest. This unholy alliance created something they call the Brand Safety Floor and Suitability Framework. Think of brand safety as a dog whistle for censorship. They say it themselves, the brand Dog whistle for censorship. You can censor your own stuff. You can want your product not associated with things. I could see this as a form of like pushing censorship because of just the nature of like, you're not incentivized to have that or you're, an incentive is taken away from you. But censorship laws are really based around the government and public goods. 
you would have to make an argument that these are public goods or public spaces where freedom of speech is the requirement, at which point you can't have any argument against, um, well, that'd be the first degree, right? And then the second degree would be that anything that is free speech also is necessarily required to have things like monetization. It's bizarre because like, we're okay right now with corporations being able to spend ungodly amounts of money in lobbying and such like as we just saw, but an individual has a cap. It's pretty low. We should actually make corporations have the cap or PACs. Super PACs have the cap that an individual does that would solve a lot of our problems. Uh, anyways. Safety floor means, quote, content not appropriate for any advertising support. In other words, if you publish content that violates these guidelines, you will be blacklisted from 90% of the advertising revenue in the marketplace. So what have these global elites decided to put in their censorship framework? It started with things we can almost universally agree on, like preventing the distribution of child pornography or the advocacy right. of graphic terrorist activity. As we saw, the vast but majority. They don't draw the line at what is objectively criminal, abusive, or dangerous. They continue expanding the guidelines to include far more subjective parameters. But they don't draw the line at what is objectively criminal, abusive, or dangerous. They continue expanding the guidelines to include far more subjective parameters. Oh. For example. Okay, I was confused. I was wondering if he asked about criminal. Um, but he's just saying they don't they don't stop at what would be criminal. But of course, it's not private company. Co private companies don't stop at what's criminal, right? A business can require you to wear a shirt inside of their business. A business can ask you to leave if you don't meet their dress code. A business can ask you to leave if you're being loud and obnoxious. The The law is what's the minimum for businesses to uh, support. And then businesses have a whole bunch of stuff they can otherwise restrict in this country. So I'm confused. Is he wanting more government regulation to prevent basically he would be arguing you know there was that um cake person who refused to make cakes uh, for homosexuals there was that other person in colorado who like refused to do like wedding photography or, or flyers or something to that effect wedding planning um i forget what it was exactly but um she wanted to be able to put up on her business that she won't take these clients. And is he arguing that she should have to and do a good job of it, of course, monetize it. And, you know, um, as if she would any other customer and, and who's going to enforce that. And if I make a product, do I not have the capacity to then prevent where it gets advertised? I'm advertising for my benefit. I'm not advertising for their benefit. I'm advertising for my benefit and my company's benefit, right? My profit. And he's going to say that the government should step in and prevent that limitation or that business from allowing. Is that really where we're going? That Daily Wire is supporting high levels of government intervention and regulations? Weird. Weird. You can really tell they must either be hurting or see the kind of conservative messaging not growing. The framework lists subjective terms like hate speech as a problem. It says that anything surrounding transgenderism that they decide is dehumanizing. Whoa, or disgusting. whoa, whoa, whoa. Anything surrounding transgenderism. See, this is them targeting and slipping some stuff in. I didn't see anything about transgenderism in here. Nope. The only words with trans in it are transparency in the entire brain safety floor. I wonder if, I wonder if their main page has anything about it. Nope. Nope. Okay, so he's slipping that in. It may be covered um, as part of a subgroup of all of these, like there's gender identity in there, there's uh, sexual orientation, right? But he's the one choosing to call out specific groups. That's, it's 
technically inaccurate because they don't call it out, but it is certainly, um, he's trying to rile up the people watching the show. Yeah. Something to that effect. That's what he's, he's trying to, I mean, I don't know why he'd highlight dehumanizes groups, right? This is just, that's, I think most people would be behind not paying people to dehumanize groups. What they deem to be a debated social issue in an insensitive way is off limits. The framework is deliberately vague, allowing those in control to pick and choose how they enforce it and against whom. So how exactly do the approved narratives set by these global entities get enforced all the way down to the daily content you consume, including maybe this video? Well, here's how. We'll start with NewsGuard. NewsGuard is an organization that formulates ratings NewsGuard. for American media. They rank news sites on a zero to 100 scale based on nine supposedly apolitical criteria. These criteria are anything but apolitical. They often align with left-wing positions. During the height of COVID, NewsGuard falsely labeled and downgraded 21 news sites only well after the fact admitting that they either mischaracterized the site's claims about the lab leak theory, referring to the lab leak theory as a conspiracy theory, or wrongly grouped together unproven claims about the lab leak with the separate false claim that the COVID-19 virus was man-made, without explaining that one claim was unsubstantiated and the other was false. NewsGuard apologizes for these errors, they said. They have made the appropriate correction on each of the 21 labels. It's a... NewsGuard found that out and NewsGuard posted news. Guard. Oh, here we go. So this is a big thing on their whole page. Coronavirus misinformation tracking center. We're tracking the top myths about COVID-19 and the more than 645 websites spreading them. So 21 out of 645 websites, right? If people reporting it, Talk about where those sites are coming from. We are winning the game. Ah, uh, okay, so they separate two things. So here it says, NewsGuard seeks to be careful in distinguishing be between unsubstantiated claims published on the websites we review versus provably false claims. As their example, reports that a Harvard professor was arrested for creating the COVID-19 virus are provably false. So they can find evidence that that was falsified information that it didn't happen, right? You could go reach out to Harvard or whatnot and asked them, hey, do you have any professors who were arrested for creating the COVID-19 virus? And then while claims that the virus leaked from a lab are not substantiated, but not as of now, provably false. So they couldn't prove this false, but it is just not substantiated. So someone might make the claim that it was leaked from a lab. They can't prove that claim false. Might be tough to do, right? Um, but it's not provably false they don't have evidence that they know exactly where it came from right that wasn't a lab thus the notion that the virus leaked from the lab is not and has never been listed below as a covid 19 myth because while not substantiated also as of now it's not provably false here's the part that he was talking about so in the recent review of newsguard's nutrition labels covering 246 websites um about the origin of COVID-19, we found that 225 of those cases, we adhered to that standard. So the one up above, by describing the lab leak claimed as unobstantiated, not false. However, in 21 instances, our language was not as careful as it should have been. So they're talking about careful language. That's a high standard to have. Um, and they may have mischaracterized the site's claims about the lab leak theory, referring to the lab leak as a conspiracy theory, which I could see then might, people might link conspiracy theory to provably false or wrongly grouped together unproven claims about the lab leak with separate false claim that the COVID-19 was man-made without explaining one claim was unsubstantiated and the other was false. Ah, okay. So there are some where they may have linked together, say like an unsubstantiated claim like the lab leak with man-made, and because man-made was already provably false, um, the other one was... Um, unsubstantiated and they didn't separate those two out just called the one false and then that could lead someone to believe that both were false right because we naturally do that if one thing is true we believe the next thing we're told is more likely true okay and then however because newsguard's approach to rating websites involves looking at much more than a single story a single topic or even a single editorial practice no site was given a red rating by newsguard solely because it speculated or asserted 
of the COVID-19 virus leaked from a lab. In all of the nutrition labels we reviewed, red-rated sites had promoted other false or unsubstantiated claims, including false claims that the COVID-19 virus was created in a U.S. military lab, that it was engineered using parts of HIV, or that it was stolen from a Canadian lab by Chinese spies. So they still clarify that that's not what they were using to identify red reports. But this is good. Like they found this, they're transparent with it. They're continuing to update the information. They're providing the myth information here. Like it's not perfect. They weren't a hundred percent upfront perfect with all the information and the mischaracterizations, but they definitely did a good job like finding it and then talking about it themselves. That's, it's pretty good. Um, if only most new sites did that, right? Which some of them may, but this is a whole big page like this. There's no joking around about this. It's not just like a little snippet at the bottom of a page. Which are the worst, right? Because you're not going to read through the whole article. or whatever. Anyways. And when you compare their ratings of left-leaning news organizations to right-leaning... And when you compare their ratings of left-leaning news organizations to right-leaning news organizations, you see the same bias appear. The media outcomes aren't bias. Just because you see that um, more conservative-leaning news media sites get a lower ranking for factual information than left-leaning sites, and a few examples, I'm unless it's 100% both ways, right? So like, unless 100% of left-leaning groups have a higher rating than 100% of right-leaning groups, then you're dealing on some kind of bias yourself. Like you're, you're basically saying outcomes equal bias. And that is counter to Ben's position in terms of systemic race. For instance, he's saying, if you look at the outcomes of these neighborhoods, that doesn't link you to a bias and cause, but here he's going to say that that's okay to do. That is wrong. He's, He's being hypocritical there. Evocably racist. He wrote, most famously, a book called Stamp from the Beginning, the definitive history of racist ideas in America about how America was literally racist in all of its iterations from the very beginning that is up to and including all of the constitutional protections of the Bill of Rights. He also wrote a book called How to Be an Anti-Racist. And he now has a podcast called Be an Anti-Racist. So what exactly does this genius say about racism? Well, he can't really define the term. He just knows that racism exists wherever there is a disparity. The direct quote from him, as an anti-racist, when I see racial disparities, I see racism, which is unbelievably stupid. And you might think that it's genius. It's really, really stupid. Let me give you an example of how stupid that is. The vast majority of the NBA is black. That is a massive racial disparity. Only 13% of the American population is black. The vast majority of the NBA players are black. Does this mean? that there has been some sort of deep and abiding racism in the NBA to make all of that happen? Conversely, in hockey, virtually all the players are white. Does that mean there is a deep and abiding racism that exists at the root of hockey? And that is why there's just not that many black hockey players playing at the NHL level? Of course not. It's incredibly silly. If you see, for example, that 99% of men, in, of people in prison for violent crime are men, less than 2% are women, is that because of some deeply sexist root in society? That if we were a non-sexist society, 50% of the people going to prison for a violent crime would be women, presumably? The truth is disparities exist across virtually every industry, across virtually every metric in society for all of time. They are tied to everything from geography to environment. The idea that if two groups by race do not stack up identically in any particular area, this is because of systemic and abiding racism is nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Um, in his data, in how he analyzes data. Right? But anyways, who's MRC? Let's see what MRC has to say. The Research Center, a free speech nonprofit, studied NewsGuard's ratings. Here are the average ratings afforded to left and left-leaning outlets versus those on the right. The study found glaring examples of bias by NewsGuard. The left's BuzzFeed managed a 100 out of 100 perfect score, despite its reporting on the Steele dossier and alleging collusion between Trump and Russia. The study found that the Global Times, a Chinese propaganda government outlet, scored a 39.5. That is 27 points higher than the U.S.-based conservative outlet, The Federalist. Despite a scandal at USA Today revealing the publication of multiple fabricated sources in their stories and their own fact-checking operation misleading readers on the history of the Democratic Party and the KKK, USA Today maintained the 100 out of 100 rating by NewsGuard. News I wonder if they 
talk about this. Okay, so first let's see media media research center. Take a look at them. So radical left is usually language used by right leaning organizations. Media big lie, no evidence. So I don't know if they're really fact based here, but here we go. Here's the article. So they're already they're already starting off with an opinion based term. They're 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 coming to a conclusion and then supporting it, right? So remember they said not just one instance. So Gabriella Miranda uh, put up you know, articles and 23 of them were taken down by USA Today. But I want to say it was USA Today found it. Here we go. Here's the actual USA Today information. So they received an external correction request, and then they did an audit. Their audit found that there was you know, basically bad claims potentially some organizations or people not affiliated with organizations that were quoted to be and you know they apologize for the information but of course they went out and and they keeping them here like so they're keeping the links to the articles and i'm sure that these have something on the top of them and the story has been removed from our platform because it does not meet our standards and then it links back to the story this is good so they found a problem in their own auditing process using a method they have for corrections. They did something about it and they removed them and they kept that information. So if someone finds this link, right, they can see, oh, this is bad, right? And it wasn't a good article, didn't meet their standards. Okay, I wonder what NewsCard has to say about USA Today. So it's talking about the 23 stories. So it included that in the individual uh, correction. They did the corrective. Oh, they talk about that this story has been removed from our platform because it doesn't meet our standards. Right at the top. Good. It calls out a lot of this information about specific article. And yeah, this is just, I mean, they're being transparent. They're being good, but this is the only failure. So, okay, what, is, what does NewsGuard say about the Federalist? Wow, 12.5, okay. So I'm wondering what their full nutrition label is here. So conservative website that has repeatedly published false and misleading information about the January 6th, 2021 attack on the US Capitol, COVID-19 and other issues. So it's giving a comment of proceed with maximum caution. What does it say about credibility? Okay, so this is about January 6th, about specifically giving false information. So this is talking about the footage and about the QAnon shaman going through and the Federalist was claiming that he was escorted through with Capitol Police and he was just kind of um, walking through like a, a normal person not doing anything, right? And it was, was some passive chaperoned observer, right? And when the Federalist was asked about this article, here's their response. There is video footage of at least nine Capitol Hill police officers escorting Chansley around the Capitol peacefully. Maybe they did ask him to leave and Chansley was clearly breaking the law, but the footage does not show Chansley rampaging or acting violently. Despite all of the people talking about it, that being only four minutes of video. Anyways, it goes against the observation of the, the people and the people actually involved who are police, right? So if you trust police, probably can't trust this article and they're not willing to change it it sounds like now here's another one about them saying that the inflation reduction act was going to fund the hiring of 87,000 new irs agents which is provably false because a lot of that money was to go towards replacing retiring employees most new hires will fill customer service and technology roles not audit roles by new equipment it looks like yeah so not to pay for auditors and specifically not auditors to audit you know, middle-class folks, right? Oh, Cause they use the word agent. So in this, their response, when NewsGuard reached out to them, so this is interesting. NewsGuard reaches out to the companies before like making the clarification, right? They, or the, the number, they all want to get responses from the articles that they've checked on. So that's good practice. 
because you want to give them a chance, right, to talk, tell their story. On what do they know, right? So the Federalist response about this confusion or problem with their article that keeps pushing this narrative about agents to audit folks is most of the money is going to tax enforcement. So why wouldn't most of the hires be made be related to tax enforcement in some way? Is it just that we're hung up on the precise definition of agent in this context? Well, agents hold a particular role in the IRS. Anyways, instead of responding to it, correcting it, or changing misleading headlines, it sounds like they push back and just say, what if, you know, like red herring kind of logic comments. So it sounds like they're bad, right? Let's see. So one of the one of the left leaning groups is MSNBC, which I don't really trust a lot. Okay, so they're at fifty seven percent. That's probably a well deserved proceed with caution, right? A lot of their stuff is opinion or misleading headlines, um, or they do a lot of editorial work, right? What about the Daily Wire? Daily Wire is sixty nine point five. So, you know, this is credible with exceptions. That's it sounds that's actually better than I would have anticipated, right? Just because I've got a personal bias probably against the Daily Wire. Um it looks like it comes from a lot of the opinionated videos, um weird documentaries that like Matt Walsh puts out, Jordan Peterson, of course. Um well, none of that stuff's their credibility. That's just their content. Okay. Credibility. Ah, here you go. The Daily Wire's news stories regularly rely on accounts by other news organizations, which we can see, like, Ben's not doing his own investigative work. He's using other groups. And then he's usually using, like, they're usually using misleading headlines. Okay. All right. So you can, if you have NewsGuard installed, you can see any of these things. If you come to their page, you can see their nutrition labels. It, it doesn't seem like only left-leaning or right-leaning uh, groups are getting low or high numbers. So I think at this point it would be on Ben to prove that the amount of articles that USA Today releases, the vast majority of them are less factual than say, let's say, say his own news organization, right? It's something he'd know very well about that. He'd have to prove these things to be the case and that the percentage of that is higher in USA Today if he felt like they deserved a lower rating. And besides, 69.5 is higher than the 66% rating he's talking about. Um, the fact that a conservative news network or quote-unquote news network falls below a liberal one is not in and of itself evidence of bias because that would assume that conservative news networks are just as factual as liberal ones by and large. But we can see that there are exceptions to that rule, but from Media Research Center's rating system of averaging news guards uh, rating system, it would seem that more liberal-based news organizations are backing up their facts, are presenting, uh, you know, back things, correcting stuff, putting that in the proper places, having fewer unnecessary corrections, not repeating problematic or misleading headlines. Some of that, sure, personally descriptive or subjective to whomever is doing that rating system. Um, but it seems like they're reaching out to give even groups like the Federalists, who they'd have a low number for, a chance to prove their case. And it's the Federalist who didn't want to prove their case. They just wanted to dismiss it. Why would they care, right? They're still making money. Daily Wire is still making money. They don't need to be more factual than USA Today to be making money. So if making money is his concern, which it sounds like it is, then I'd be upset too because like you're going to dismiss me as less factual. That's going to link to NewsGuard. NewsGuard is going to prevent people from checking those sites. If they've got it installed, I don't know how many people have that installed. And we'll see where it goes from there. NewsGuard is a trusted partner to Garm. They help ensure that ad buyers and users ah, looking for news can be in safe with Garm. And suitable places. Now I'm going to give you a practical example of what this means for this show. For example, if I did an ad on this show, 
I'd have to do it with a company that doesn't make ad buying decisions according to GARM standards. A company not associated with GARM or NewsGuard that we love doing business with is a company called Genucel. You've heard about Genucel on my daily show. Genucel has great products like their Dark Spot Corrector. See, we sell our ad space based on a certain number of projected views. But unfortunately, due to GARM and NewsGuard, we now sell them at a reduced rate. As this is the very... Okay, so I'm leaving this in here, even though it's an ad and it's an ad coming from the Daily Wire. And if someone buys Genucel, it might be there. First of all, it's smart that he's putting it in the video because then as part of the video, right, it counts as not ad space, like from YouTube, who is likely to use GARM from the previous mentioned, um, which would then prevent it if it got demonetized. He's now making a claim that he has to sell, like they have to work with these ads at lower rates, but you're not going to get sympathy from me if you're a private company trying to seek ad revenue from other companies who don't want to be associated with you and you want, what, the government to step in and force them to work with you? That doesn't seem fair or constitutional or supportive of conservative private industry beliefs, right? Like if you're a capitalist business, you either succeed on your merits or you fail on your merits. And it sounds like you're afraid of failing. So this is smart to get this other group. But the Daily Wire is doing fine, right? I'm sure they want a bigger pie. They want more profit. Maybe they should work on being more factual and less bullying, right? It's not a requirement, clearly. They can still post stuff. I see Matt watch things pop up all the time. So, yeah. Very first episode of Fact, we're betting we've got our projected view count right for the sake of deals with future advertisers. But either way, we're thankful to be working with Genucel, a company using cutting edge ingredients and products like their ultra retinal moisturizer with a retinal alternative for safe use in the sun. If you go to genucel.com slash Ben right now, you can get your dark spot corrector and ultra retinal moisturizer. And this in has been Genucel's airing for two package. months, by the way. So they clearly weren't taken down. They're not being censored. Ben. Go check them out right now. NewsGuard is also working with others to use AI technology to enforce brand safety standards at scale by identifying scalable hoaxes and misinformation in order to streamline blanket removal. This means that the news that you read, news that is supposed to be fair and objective or at least diverse, must adhere to GAR. Wait, 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 at least diverse? No, we want accuracy, not diverse. Did you include accuracy? In order to streamline blanket removal, this means that the news that you read, news that is supposed to be fair and objective or at least diverse. Fair and objective. Sure, right is the most important, right, uh, you know, accurate, right, objective, N nothing's truly objective, but as close to as possible, right? Those, yes. Diverse, no, you don't need to seek out incorrect information just to have some incorrect information in your news. Must adhere to GAR, the WEF, the WFA, and their subjective and biased standards in order to be deemed monetizable. If you think this is only something big news corporations have to contend with, think again. Even the content you consume from independent content creators on social media platforms, like the one on which you're watching this video, is subject to these globalist powers that be. So for example, my friend Matt Walsh, he was demonetized on YouTube. Why? Well, because he says that men are not women. The same was true. It wasn't just because he said men are not women, almost certainly. Okay. But how does the Daily Wire put this? $100,000 a month on YouTube ads. That's amazing. A lot of money. That's, that's, a, that's a, a lot of folks. There's, there's no wonder he wants back into that, right? And it's not if I simply respect the preferred pronouns. I don't know if he, did he post the, the letter? It wasn't stopped from posting on YouTube, right? Okay, so he not only created a bunch of content around, around this person, but her names specifically targeting even created a campaign against Dylan Mulvaney didn't know that Walsh has targeted Mulvaney in a series of increasingly vicious attacks over a period of several months beginning with a rant you're a weird and artificial calling them unearthly and eerie they need rather be dead than have a trans child Wow. So like he wasn't just educating people on transgenderism or even educating people on 
pronouns or what the debate is about or why he thinks one way over the other. He's specifically targeting a specific person, calling them out, using them as an example, and then bullying them, essentially verbally bullying them, right? So if I were an advertiser, I probably wouldn't want to be associated with him. That's why you joined the Garm standards, it seems. On TikTok, another Garm member, where Daily Wire hosts are routinely hit with content strikes and various bans for saying things like men are not women. Meanwhile, Dylan Mulvaney... But it wasn't because he said men are not women. We, we know that from other quotes that he has shoots up the TikTok algorithms by insulting women, saying day one of being a girl and I've already cried three times already. Or, for example, if you question... The it's not bullying or insensitive material. Ben might argue that it's incorrect or inaccurate, um, but he can't argue that it's specifically problematic language uh, un unless he's willing to admit that anything that Matt, Wal Matt Walsh has said is is equally so, if not 10 times, 20 times worse, right? Um, that seems really bizarre. Like, there are quotes far worse from Matt Walsh that we just read compared to anything he just quoted from Dylan Mulvaney. This is a hard one, I think, for Ben to be winning. This isn't facts for sure. This is definitely opinion at best the accepted wisdom on COVID. So for example, let's say you say that vaccines, not great for kids. No evidence kids need them. Kids aren't dying from COVID. If you say any of those things, GARM, WEF, WFA, they will crack down on you with- Wait, wait, was that a BBC article? I already cried three times already. Or for example, so for example, let's say you say that vaccines, not great for kids. No evidence kids need them. Kids aren't dying from COVID. So the BBC almost certainly was not demonetized for this. Where you're probably going to get demonetized in this one is if you told people that by giving vaccines to your kids, they would die. Right? Or get seriously sick. But anyways, I'll let this one go. I don't know how I'd research this one to see if the BBC or the Daily Mail got demonetized. If you say any of those things, GARM, WEF, WFA, they will crack down on you with alacrity. In addition to looking at how companies and creators are punished for violating these standards, it's also important to look at what is considered brand safe. In other words, what narratives are 90% of advertising revenue dollars working to advance? So for example, advertisers like Procter & Gamble, who advertise with Mulvaney, consider Mulvaney safe, as opposed to The Daily Wire, which is not considered brand safe, and thus would never be supported by the same advertiser. Brand safety regulations inform culture. In some ways, they actually fund culture, like Garm member Bud Light sending a personalized girlhood beer can to Dylan Mulvaney, or Garm member Lego declaring gender is non-binary and making trans-themed Lego designs, or Garm member Hershey's using a male in a women's chocolate ad, or Garm member P&G's Razor Brand Gillette, which pushed toxic masculinity narratives and taught dads how to shave their daughter's beard. These are all endeavors deemed to be brand safe for companies to engage in. The brand gets to choose that though. I this is this is bizarre. I can't research this. Like this is very difficult to research other than just to say suck it up, buttercup. Right? And not risk being either deprived of others' advertising dollars or having their advertising dollars turned away. By contrast, Jeremy's Razors, not a brand safe partner. Bud Light isn't gonna be sending a flannel shirt to Matt Walsh. Matt is not brand safe. Abigail Schreier can't advertise her book on Amazon. It contains objective. Is that true? Well, the audio book is available. Oh, that, that even had the hardcover book. I mean, I could buy it right now. So I can buy it? Did she get it back on? So April 23rd, this was shared. So it did disappear for a time. So it disappeared from what, January 23rd, pulled off Target's online bookstore. Sure, that makes sense, right? Like Target can do what it wants. It's a business. I mean, they're advocating for schools being able to remove stuff. So why can't a private business? They can refuse service to anyone, right? 
April 23rd. That's the daily news. I don't, I'm not going to try and validate any of this information. It sounds fine, right? Um, in terms of accuracy. When was this released? Two months ago? That would have been August? Or July 29th. So July 29th, 2023. So by the time this video is made, she was at least back on the store. Her book. And before that was sold and published. Yeah. Okay. If an app store can declare an app illegitimate, right? Not safe. So can a bookstore? I don't understand. Actionable content about sexual orientation. But Amazon will allow paid ads for things like chess binders and pro trans books. So what does all this mean? Why should you care? Well, like any other business, the news media, we have to be able to make money by producing the news. Fact checkers are now incentivizing media outlets to comply. Did you just use Tucker Carlson as news? That's funny. Um, I mean, especially because he's the guy who was found to be lying to people, advocating certain things and, and all those. He, his even pro-Trump stance on air wasn't even accurate, right? According to his own text messages. Yeah. Not, not a great figurehead for the Daily Wire to promote news. With the WEF GARM narratives by determining what is and what is not monetizable. The WEF, GARM, WFA, they're all actively working with social media companies to censor what they consider to be misinformation, which very often is just good information with which they disagree. It's not censored, Finally, the WEF, demonetized, WFA, GARM, we need to be clear. They're all aggressively pouring billions of dollars a year into news and content that drives their preferred narrative. Narratives that are often counterfactual at best and harmful at worst. When you look at the news, you need to feel as though you're getting all the information. And even if one's- No, again, you're not, you shouldn't feel like you got all the information. You should feel like you got the correct or right information, like accurate information from the news. All the information would be impossible for the news to give you. And again, you shouldn't, like you shouldn't go out of your way to read about Bat Boy on National Enquirer just because someone is proclaiming it as news. News ought to be held to a higher standard of truth before you consume it. The source isn't giving you all the information, you can check another source. And all those sources together will give you a broad view of the world. But the world, but the World Economic Forum, the World Federation of Advertisers, and the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, they don't want you to have a full view of the news. They want you to see what they want you to see. And they will work to prevent anyone from disseminating information they don't pre-approve. They are determining what you see, what you hear, what you watch. And that's dangerous. Good outro. And no sunglasses this time. All right. In summary, let's go over some things. So his basic claim is there's some con conglomerations of... Um, corporation, so like a mega foundation or mega corporation, right? That that is saying you shouldn't see or not hear about certain things, right? So that's the WEF, the WFA, and how are they doing that? They're doing it through NewsGuard and through GARM, GARM standards, which is basically the same thing. So all of it links to NewsGuard's factual ratings, which then GARM uses in order to help demonetize things. On the request by the request of privately owned corporations. His concern is that they're awokeified, which they're not. We showed that they're not conservative or liberal leaning, those companies, at least from the groups that we looked at, there was a wide range of stuff. NewsGuard, same thing. They have some liberal groups that are below the accuracy rating of even the Daily Wire, some that you might uh, not think of, like MSNBC, lower rating than Daily Wire, right? Um, and Fox News, for that matter. Fox News, I think, is also right there at the Daily Wire at 69 and a half. So it's not clear that there's a bias at NewsGuard. That would be on him to prove. And his only proof, um, or his only supposed evidence, is a report by Media Research Center that just averaged the groups and said liberal groups have a higher rating than uh, conservative groups, 
but they don't go into details about like, well, why? Well, if you go into those NewsGuard uh, reportings, you can kind of see why the ones he called out, like the Federalist, have a really low rating on constant attempt to reach out about misleading and misinformation headlines. They just pushed back and dismissed it. They didn't actually respond or answer or approve anything they were talking about. They continued to repeat the information down the road and um, would oftentimes leave up articles that had that misinformation without correctly editing it or putting just a small link down at the bottom. Versus say like USA Today, where there was the one instance of the stories that had fabrication, the 23 instances that was found by USA Today, it didn't have to get reached out to by NewsGuard. They found it during an audit. They went out of their way. They made that transparent. They corrected it. They left the link so people could still find it. It wasn't just ghosted and see the headline with all the article removed, but the headline saying this doesn't meet our standards. That's a good news company. So no wonder it has a higher rating than a group like The Federalist. Then you have groups like The Daily Wire, which were called out for putting out opinionated pieces without clearly identifying them as opinionated. Various other things that are definitely a hot topic issue, but generally considered safe, like a generally accurate um, place on their factual news articles, which surprises a person like me where I'm like, oh, well, the but, you know, coming to think of it, you could read a Daily Wire um, article and get a lot of information out of it, but you'd have to take the opinionated and biased kind of portions of the language out and you'd get some kind of semblance of accurate reporting out of some of their stuff. Right. So that that makes sense. Um, but his real concern is that us, the Daily Wire in that case, He's being demonetized or his company is being demonetized because he doesn't meet GARM's standards and they're not able to, uh, you know, get an exception for whatever they're doing. Right. And Matt Walsh is part of that group. Well, that's kind of a boohoo, right? Like, I'm sorry, but you you're from a group of people. You kind of back a cons the conservative party, which the Republicans are very much about private company gets to make decisions on who they serve, who they service all the time. That is a standard practice. They're not banning you. They're not censoring you. I just watched this video on YouTube. That's multiple months old. I can probably still find tons of stuff from Matt Walsh from multiple months old. And yet the concern is the demonetization. So what you're really saying is that big companies who want to advertise their product have to be willing to advertise it for everybody across the board. But that's not really how private companies make decisions in this country. If I don't want my brand associated with you, I cannot let you advertise my stuff. I don't want you to be an advertiser of my stuff, right? And just because you have freedom of speech doesn't mean you're free from consequences. That's another refrain from the conservative party. So this is a consequence of employing your freedom of speech in these certain private companies, uh, markets like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, on your own website, you're not being banned or stopped uh, in this way. You're just not getting the monetization. I don't even know which ones of yours are being monetized or not anymore at this point. And the GARM standard is a step in the right direction in doing that. Again, big business. The only way around this would be to say, hey, have the government enact some kind of regulation to make sure that anybody would have to service, help, aid anyone, regardless of their gender, their identity, their orientation, anything like that which of course wouldn't be very well backed by the conservative party who backed things like the wedding cake or wedding planner person in the past. So this is really a problematic episode because for facts episode one, he's really just illustrating that there's some organizations. They have more influence than he would like. They don't like him and they're not willing to pay him anyways. That's his concern. Tough. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.